Hey, hear me out and give me a few minutes of your time. I wrote this book, The Scammer's Tale, and I've made videos to pique your interest to get the book. This book is my facts. This isn't a typical become your own boss and make a lot of money book. I'm not another motivational speaker pretending to be a business coach, preying on you or people in a financial situation or jabbing at your ego, making you feel less than if you don't own a business. This book discusses the good, the bads, the ups, the downs, the success, failure, forecasting failure and success of owning and operating a business. This is more than the empty talk, believe in yourself and grow a seven figure brand and make money while you sleep if you want to be successful book. I wrote this book over a five year period when I had time. I copyrighted it back in 2018 and it's 2020 now fall of 2020 to be exact. It's not my bread and butter, but it will help the economy and it will make the economy a better place. I'm not about to lie to you and tell you just because you start a business, you automatically start making a ton of money. We all have seen the person who said they made $9 per hour at a dead end job, but when they started the business, they made $50,000 in their first two months. That says a lot of nothing, and I'll tell you why later in this video. Also, that's an insult to people's pay considering these business personalities will contradict themselves by saying, find the cheapest worker you can. I'm not selling a program telling you if you take my program, it will propel your business from no sales to hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in sales. Like I was saying, people start a business and think money will just start falling out the sky because they have a business license or certificate. Around tax time, you hear all these fake scamming coaches with their manipulative marketing companies because that's mainly what they are, saying spend $99 to start a business. But all you did was really waste $99 and that time and money on their program. What usually happens when someone starts a business because they want a better life, something to leave their children, quit their job, want more family time, as a lot of time passed, they get a lot of family time due to having zero business. And that feel good hormone that that self-proclaimed business coach guru raised in you declines. Why is that? Because starting a business doesn't mean you will automatically get business. Even if you do everything right. And I know that may seem like obvious information, but I must say it. Everyone can agree with me on what I'm about to say and elaborate on regarding new and current businesses. Like I said, I'm more than a motivational speaker hiding under the guise pretending to be a business coach and not telling you the reality of owning and operating a business. Many people start a business and they race to the bottom planning, I'm going to scale large and be cheaper than everyone else, which in ever business sector they compete. If you've been in business, you can relate to this annoyance, but we still apple them or try to apple them through it. It messes it up for everyone and the economy because costs involved with doing business is real and not cheap. So those people drive down the prices before they crash and burn. These motivational speakers always hit you with the, oh, I helped the seven figure business grow. I've helped other people's seven figure business, businesses grow. I've helped my seven figure business grow. This ploy is so tired. Someone telling me they own a, or have raised a seven-figure business means nothing to me. Is this seven-figure business earning a profit? You gross seven figures, but did you net a profit? You have millions of dollars in sales, but what was your net profit? Were you just a vessel for money to pass through? There are plenty of seven-figure businesses that compete in the same sector as my parents' business. And their business grows seven figures and they work for no money, the people that competed with my parents, made no money, robbed Peter to pay Paul, slightly staying afloat due to robbing Peter to pay Paul and credit. Some years, those companies may have grossed seven figures and we may have only grossed high five, right at six in that threshold. And we made more money than them. We'll get back to this point in a minute and how you start figuring out this while in business. Simply put, I wrote my parents' story. Mine too, because I grew up in this. So it's in me, not on me. They started their business almost 35 years ago, and I just turned 30 in July. So I may do a 30% off 30-day sale. 
I was very academically smart, but growing up, I always said I was going to work in the business and take over. My folks always replied, get an education and do both for safety purposes. Safety purposes of don't let the business be your only way. Don't get sucked into this of putting yourself in a situation where you have to do it, even if the ends doesn't justify the means. They were right. I have a bachelor's of science degree in biology, and in some years it came in handy. Some years we all made more money as an employee versus being an employer. Because some years in business we have been poor. I'm talking some years revenue so low we was po, not poor. <laughs> I'm talking po. Because we could only afford the P-O apostrophe because the other O and R were too expensive. <laughs> But we got through it because of smart money management. We weren't business for it because we made mistakes. Let me explain. You start a business because you can provide a product and or service you're good at to help people and to make money. You network. You may get some clients. You try to get those clients to sign long-term contracts with you and build good working relationships. But here comes the trouble. New businesses pop up every day and people with no license or with a license who work for no money come along and your client will exploit the opportunity of finding a sucker and bumping their head. Some do, some don't. And in doing so, there's less money and work for people like us who work for a profit. Sometimes when it's time to renew your contract with the client, they go for the cheapest undercutting bottom feeder opposed to renewing with you. Don't think just because you're working for someone they're not getting frequent calls and visits from your competitors trying to work for less cost compared to yours, thinking if they want to test the waters of the lesser cost. 